Hello and welcome back to We Care A Lot. I am half the pod Sam. My other half Mel is clearly not here today. Uh, If you did not listen to Wednesday's episode, you do not know that we are doing solos this week. So Mel's episode came out on Wednesday. If you have not listened, go ahead and tune in. It was a really good one. Um, And yeah, today I'm here to do a solo just to talk, chit chat about what's been going on lately uh, we decided to do these quarterly, or at least try to, <laughs> and it just worked out in the grand scheme of planning because if you do not follow me on Instagram, then you do not know that I was in Europe for two weeks, and oh my gosh, we literally just came off talking about, I guess, like manifesting, why aren't we in Europe, all this stuff and the opportunity just came and I couldn't pass it up. I apologize for my voice. Um, First update is that I got super sick in Europe, so that was fun. Um, All things considered, I feel like it wasn't that bad, like the sickness. Um, Honestly, just fought through every single symptom to still have fun and make the most of it. We all got sick. I went with three other friends of mine. I went with Katie, who you've met. She was on the podcast. Maria and Paulina, and I have known them since high school. Well, Katie, as you know, I've known since middle school, but we've known each other for a really long time, and I don't know how much, like, people are comfortable with me sharing on this podcast. Um, I know you guys all listen. Hi, besties. Um, but I don't want to share anyone's life that they don't want shared. So I won't explain why we were there. It was very good reasons. Very exciting. Very fun. Um, but yeah, it was a really fun trip and I feel like I should get to that last because there's just so much, so many layers in that. Um, But yeah, we got sick and that's why my voice sounds like this. So please forgive me. I honestly waited as long as I could to record this so that my voice sounded as good as possible. It is fall officially and I know we've been talking about it being fall, but like the weather is somewhat giving fall now. I have my little black cat mug to celebrate and I'm drinking a pumpkin spice, not a latte, but coffee, I guess, from Nespresso. She's cold now, but that's okay. Um, I haven't had coffee in like, I don't even know, like two weeks um, because I was sick and coffee just did not sound good. And today was the first day where I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it late in the day, have a nice little coffee. Um, But yeah, anyways, before I get into Europe, what else has been going on? Um, I finished the pottery class with my mom and that was really fun. Um, we made several pieces and she picked them up for me when I was in Europe and I did not expect the glazes to turn out how they did, but alas, they are unique and not what I expected, but that's okay. I really love them. One of them is sitting right here. If you can see that on my nightstand, um, that was the first piece that came out while we were still in class. So I really love that one. Um, but if you want to see them all, I did just do a blog post about pottery and like my experience and yeah, just like how much I loved pottery and how it shaped, (sighs) honestly, just like an outlet for me. Like it literally created an outlet for me to have fun and create things and not be stuck in decision paralysis. Like it's not that deep (laughs) and just making a few things. But yeah, I definitely do feel like the more you do it, the less you feel like you need to keep every single piece. I still am keeping all these pieces because (laughs) it's still only my second time doing it. And it was a year apart from when Mel and I first did it. So um, I definitely want to do it again. I definitely want to keep practicing and get better at it. I don't think I'm like amazing by any means, but I enjoy it and I think that's what matters the most. So catch me continuing to do pottery at some point. I don't know when. Um, Europe took my bag. (laughs) Quite literally took all my money but um, we're saving and we're abundant and 
there's a lot happening behind the scenes for me. Um, I don't know what it is about turning 27, but I feel like a lot has shifted and like come to my door, I guess. I don't know, like opportunity has been knocking and that's been really exciting and I'm weirdly like not anxious or nervous like maybe a little in moments I'm like ah scary change is scary but I'm mostly just kind of like what's meant to be will be and I'm trusting that and I don't know yeah hopefully I can share more soon it's not like this big amazing secret or anything guys don't worry it's not like oh my god I'm (laughs) gonna be a singer on Broadway I don't know no it's nothing like that just you know a next step in my life potentially and yeah I'm really excited it's work wise um so we'll see that's literally happening this week for me in real time and I'm really excited and like I don't know going into Europe I just feel like (sighs) I was finally accepting the like abundance mindset like I was saying to you guys earlier in other episodes I don't even know what episode um and I just feel like once I actually accepted that things started flowing easier and all my effort is finally being seen and I don't know I just feel like I went through so many years of imposter syndrome and like not trusting my abilities or my talent or my skills and I think I'm finally honing in on those things and also just like because of that I'm now able to like enjoy life a little more not that I wasn't before because I was still enjoying life as you guys saw I mean we're going to Coachella girls nights wine nights whatever we're doing lots of fun things but I do feel, I don't know, like maybe it's just turning 27 was that shift. Like I feel more like an adult, which is crazy. Like even thinking back to 25 year old me, I'm like, oh my God, she was a baby. And that was only two years ago. But also I'm like, at that time I felt like such an adult and like I needed to have everything figured out, put together. (sighs) I don't know it's just an interesting I guess like realization that maybe I'll never have it figured out but also the closer I get to 30 Lenny was right like I do feel more secure and excited about getting older and I've never in my life been like I can't wait to be 30 but something about right now in my life I'm like I feel like we're on an upward trajectory so I can't wait to see what happens. Also, all my friends, I don't know about all my friends, but Mel and Logan for sure have been like, I feel like you're going to meet your person and you're going to get married in like a year. Like it's going to happen really fast for you. And I'm like, well, I mean, I feel that way too. I don't know why I feel that way. If it's just like hope, <laughs> delusional hope that I didn't wait all this time as if I'm fucking old. I'm not old, but I didn't wait and be single all this time to like not know you know when you know like hopefully I just know and then he knows and then we're good but oh that's another aspect of my life dating oh my god okay let's just get into Europe so in Europe I was very excited for the prospects of men because I don't know about you guys but I've seen all the content of like people going to Europe and there being all these beautiful men and I was very excited and they were not lying they were not lying at all about the beautiful prospects and did any of them talk to me no (laughs) that's not true um there's people talk to me but like no not to what I was dreaming I did not have my Lizzie McGuire moment I did not have Paolo singing to me writing on a Vespa there was none of that unfortunately but yes the men in Amsterdam are just drinking tap water I will say tap water in Europe different game love that for us but something's in that tap water I don't know but they're all really beautiful which you know makes me want to live there not gonna lie I don't know that the dating scene is any better out there because 
I couldn't tell you. I wasn't there long enough. But I will say men are less intimidated. They will actually speak to you. And so that's beautiful and wonderful for us um, single people in the world. But yeah, that was the first thing. Like literally going through customs, the guy at the border or whatever in the airport. Do you call that the border? It's not really the border. The guy in customs. Every single one of them looked like they were like, you know, when Teen Wolf was casted and we're like, none of these guys are teenagers. This is unrealistic. That's how it felt. It was like, these guys would not be like the customs people. I don't, I'm probably so wrong in what their title is. I'm so sorry, but whatever they are, I just can't believe that's what they do. They're just such beautiful people. It was shocking and I was living for it and it's just there's that many beautiful people that (laughs) they're just fucking everywhere and also they're all like six foot five I don't know what is the energy there but I needed to come here I need the six foot five to follow me home because we just we just don't we have a lot of five foot six guys a lot of five foot eight anyways but yeah Europe in general was so much fun we did Amsterdam Copenhagen Ireland and then London for a single day and we kind of got screwed we had a delayed flight if you follow me you saw that saga um it was Ryanair of course um it was unfortunate I don't even know that I should get into the details because it was just painful but long story short we had already done Amsterdam and Copenhagen at this point and we were leaving Copenhagen our flight was supposed to be at like 4 p.m and then we're supposed to land in Ireland at like 8 p.m we're like perfect get to the airport at like two o'clock and as soon as we sat down to eat right before our flight like we had like 30 minutes before boarding it was like uh your flight's been delayed till 11 55 or something tonight and I was like (laughs) this is a sick joke and I was kind of hoping that it was like a tentative delay they're like oh no it'll be earlier we're just anticipating midnight for now no um we ended up sleeping in the airport for like maybe an hour and a half um and then the rest of the time we gathered our items had a beer and ate and we were sick at this point um probably at the beginning of our sickness for the most part and it was rough green juice sounded so beautiful and wonderful so had green juice a salad the salad was wonderful yeah it was a rough like 12 hours I would say because by the time we landed in Ireland it was like 2 a.m and our car rental place was closed until 5 a.m so then we had three more hours to kill were exhausted didn't sleep on the plane the flight was only like an hour and a half two hours or something yeah it must have been like two hours three and we had to sit and basically it looked like a food court it was a burger king and like a starbucks which they were all closed when we landed so we just sat on tables a bunch of miserable people around us other travelers also sleeping on the ground and whatnot um so yeah that was really rough and then what happened after that oh then we finally got our car and poor dear katie had to drive and if you don't know ireland drives on the left side of the road and the car itself the driver is on the right side of the car as opposed to the u.s where you drive on the right side and you're driving on the left side of the car physically so that kept us up for like a good bit trying to keep us alive in that car and the roads are terribly skinny don't really recommend driving on no sleep in the wee hours of the morning but we made it and it was all good but yeah that was probably like the biggest disaster of the trip which isn't bad like it could have been so much worse I feel like we all did such a good job of being good sports of like fighting through our sickness and just like taking medicine and hoping for the best we all did really try not to get sick as well like we took vitamin c before the trip all these things and i don't know there just is a flu going around or something but yeah so that was really fun one 
little moment when I was really sick was we had to climb 300 stairs to get to the top of this stairway to heaven I believe is the monument's name that was in Copenhagen on the day we left I think and I felt horrible we had to walk everything's walking lots of walking um luckily I brought the right shoes oh you know what was humbling it was very humbling seeing an older woman at dinner wearing my brooks I was like oh I thought I was cute and like cute (laughs) like I thought I was cute for these shoes apparently not apparently not um it was humbling luckily I was not wearing them at that moment because then that would have been extra humbling also the packing situation we were living out of carry-ons and a personal item I somehow survived every single flight except the last one without having to pay overage fees or whatever I really don't know how I did but I bought the smaller freaking bag on Amazon because I wanted to ensure I didn't have to pay 80 fucking dollars and I probably could have bought more souvenirs. I could have gotten away with like a little bit more, but I would have probably hated myself depending on the souvenir, but it was fine. Um, I do recommend doing that if you're going to be flying a lot because it's just a lot to like check a bag, pick it up. Like if you're moving a lot, it's just... I'd rather not be lugging around a giant suitcase. Um, That being said, I would do it again. And I would bring a giant suitcase if I had the money to check a bag on every flight. I would do it. To have all my items, that'd be great. And not be stressed about the liquids and all of that. Katie got liquids taken away from her and it made absolutely no sense why the person took them away from her. I we're still kind of like, I don't understand, but okay, go off queen. She didn't take the most important liquid, so that was fine. But I have lots of tips when it comes to Europe. Um, there is actually going to be a blog post coming out on my blog about our adventures through Europe and some of my advice and the things we saw. I definitely want to go back. I 1000% need to see every single one of those locations for a longer period of time. I'm really glad the way we did it. I feel like we got a taste of everywhere to where we're kind of like, okay, I get the vibes. I know I like this place um, and I want to stay longer. I will say we were only in London for a day. So I'm not like, oh my God, I need to go back to London per se, but I would happily go back to London if money and time allotted for more time in London. I barely saw anything, so... I would go back for sure. I mean, the food was delicious. We ate at Deschum. I don't know if you guys are in tune with that, but it was delicious and I had no idea about it, but Paulina and Maria did. And so we had a delicious last dinner. It was basically our last supper and it was Maria's actual birthday. So we celebrated her birthday Friday and Saturday kind of. And I will say the people in Ireland were way nicer. We wore party hats everywhere and so much kindness everyone was so sweet everyone was offering drink tickets because we went to the guinness museum and everyone was just really sweet in the pubs they were singing her happy birthday (sighs) it was just a really fun time and then we got to london and not a single person told her happy birthday (laughs) i don't really know why it's giving, I mean, I guess in LA it kind of would be the same vibes. Maybe. I don't know. But also, the biggest takeaway for me constantly throughout this trip was just like, I'm going to have so much more grace and kindness for my fellow tourists um, that are in LA and getting in my way and being slightly annoying. I'm going to try and have more patience for them because I remember back to how fucking stressful it was to be a tourist and honestly it wasn't that stressful but it was a little like jerky like which way we're going you know what I mean and like that's totally fine and normal hello we've never been to this place before or like taking pictures of the most mundane things like I would catch myself taking pictures of literally just a street and 
it just makes me think about like this is so mean but I would kind of think it was silly that people were taking pictures of the grove and that is so mean of me I'm like yeah girl they've never been to the grove that's cool for them like god forbid (laughs) and it's not like I would say anything or do anything I would just in my head be like oh my god why are they stopping right in front of me to take a picture of this thing at the grove or whatever I'm like the grove is literally here all the time but obviously these people spent good money and that's also the thing is we are so grateful that Europe is so one walkable two like you could go from one to the other like London to Paris whatever everything's very um quick trips short inexpensive trips to get to one place to the other unlike the United States where it's like you are taking long haul flights to get to the other side of this fucking country so for that very grateful would very happily go back to Europe the next time the opportunity comes knocking at my door living in an abundance mindset because I just spent all my money but yeah it was also interesting in Copenhagen because they have a different currency kroners I believe is how you say it and um it was monopoly money we had no idea what we were spending they would say your total is 1000 and we were like okay <laughs> like sounds good I'll figure out what that is on my chase bill later and that's kind of how we lived and I think that is how we ended up spending so much money but it was such a good time I wish I could get into every little detail but this episode would literally run for probably an hour and we don't need that you guys just want a quick little update and that is like the biggest update I think overall just if you have the opportunity to go somewhere you've been wanting to go or really want to go do it within reason (laughs) like be responsible but if you have the opportunity and you're able to even if you're a little bit nervous about it, I would say just do it. Money will always be there as Logan and Mel are always telling me. And yeah, I feel like it was such an empowering experience to take myself somewhere internationally. And I honestly have never done that. I have gone to my parents' places. My ex-boyfriend had paid for my entire other international trips and I didn't have to worry about a thing which was wonderful and I'm so glad I had that experience too don't get me wrong but taking myself somewhere and being fully responsible for the trip is a very empowering experience and yeah I don't know maybe that's also part of why I feel so excited about what's to come in my independence and that was a really big step for me and yeah I don't know Long story short, take the trip, make the memories, and spend the Monopoly money. (laughs) I guess one last thing about Europe was that when I was there, I also had to work and I had to bring my computer. Oh my god, we stayed at hostels. There is so much I did not share. Oh my gosh. Okay, actually, just go look at my blog post when it's out next Thursday. When you're listening to this, it'll be out next week. If you're listening to it when it came out, I just, there's so much I could share, but I just won't. (laughs) And if you guys are interested or have any specific questions about the places I visited or recommendations, if you want them like ASAP, ASAP, because you're going somewhere, please DM me on Instagram or honestly, yeah, I don't check TikTok enough. Sorry. But yeah, Instagram, message me. I'd love to answer any of your questions. And yeah, I hope to see you guys next week in our episodes with Mel. I haven't seen Mel in so long. I literally haven't seen her in like at least two weeks, but it feels like it's been three. I think it might have been three at this point. Um, So I'm excited for us to get back together and record some episodes for you guys. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.